couple questions on discipleship. How do you organize who is taking care of you? Um, that particular thought, again, if you were to test that thing from anything that you'd see in the New Testament, someone would say, well, what difference does it make? Isn't it okay that we assign somebody to be over someone else in order to disciple them? Isn't that okay? And actually, it's not okay. You know, and again, I get in trouble for saying stuff like that. Like, what's the problem? The end justifies the means. Well, no, it doesn't. Because what happens is if I put myself over person X as I'm their discipler and I'm going to teach them the things they need to know about following God, I'm really not in a position to listen to them. It's sort of like if you assign a teacher of a, quote, Bible class, they're not really in a great position to learn. They're not really going to be listening. They're going to feel the need to comment on every comment that comes back because everything's going this way. Instead of going around Jesus, remember Jesus said, seated to the circle around him, these are my fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters. You know, that those, to the ones seated around in the circle around him, it says. And that's the way it has to be in the church, that it's that we're relating to each other not as as a as a an office or an official person to bring anything, not an official disciple, an official reverend, an official father, an official anything. That is not New Testament Christianity. As soon as I place that artificial barrier between myself and another person, there is loss. Just like calling him king rather than just Samuel, the man of God, the man that can hear God, now it's like we have an official authority that's an, an officer, per se, an official teacher of the Bible class, an official person you know, of any particular kind. We put a barrier between ourselves and them, and we've destroyed an aspect of that relationship that's very precious. I need to be able to relate to people, and if they respect the Christ in me, that's well and good. But that's a choice between them and God that they're going to work out in their daily relationships based on fruit and based on these other sorts of things. But I'm not going to tell them that, they have, that I'm going to be your official teacher. If I say, well, here's some things about prayer, which I may very well do with somebody, help them to learn more about prayer. But what if the person next door to him or, or some other person in the church also wants to do that? Well, you have to talk to my discipler. You have to talk to my prayer partner. You need to talk to the person that's assigned to look over me. You know, it's like it's such a cheap thing. It's, just, it's like a bunch of sausages stringed after another. It, it's really not God's heart, God's way. You don't find anything like that in the New Testament. They need the organic life of the body of Christ around them where God can raise up people to, to interact with them for a season of their life and, and can move people in and out of their lives in a dynamic way by Jesus' own spirit and Jesus' own decree. I need to be able to get on the phone and call somebody or go over to somebody's house at 9 o'clock in the evening and the doors swing open with open arms without feeling like, well, wait a minute, somebody else is discipling them and I'm discipling someone else. It's an artificial barrier that's destructive to relationship and it doesn't need to be there. You're all brothers. Call no man discipler. You're all brothers. You have one discipler. You're all brothers. Follow my lead. I'll show you how to interact with people. And that's, that's how God will bring us day by day. So it's uh, in the communications industry, they call that any to any communication. You can get from any point to any other point without having to follow a strict chain of command. Yeah. So it's, it's that same sort of a thing. Any to any, to any uh, um, whether it's relationally or it has to do with groups of people and apartment complexes, uh, the freedom from a person from this apartment complex with a hundred some odd people there to be in someone else's living room in a different apartment complex when there's teaching and worship going on and then not feel like a stranger, like, whoa, I've crossed the line, I'm, I'm in another realm now, I'm in someone else's cell, I'm a visitor in this cell. You know, wrong. I mean, if it's the body of Christ, there needs to be, even from neighborhood to neighborhood, part of the city to part of the city, relationship to relationship, there needs to be access to all the gifts in the body of Christ without any artificial barriers.